mass of wreckage. Tanks and guns marks the wake of Field Marshal Rommel's flight across the desert. Nazi planes blasted on the ground and in the sky lie half buried beneath the hot and shifting African sands. In pursuit of the main force go tanks of Britain's victorious 8th Army, spearhead of an advance that covered 100 miles in a single day. Over roads flooded by torrential rainfall, General Montgomery pushes on. Careful to protect his ever-lengthening supply line, he establishes bases along the way. Matru, once an important harbor, is littered with wrecked Axis supply ships, giant Nazi seaplanes that never got off the water. Nazis left to fight rear guard actions are captured. Italians drive their own trucks to prison camps behind the lines. Guards are hardly needed. The captives show no inclination to escape. Even high Nazi officers are taken in the route of Rommel. Human wreckage bearing witness to one of the greatest military collapses in history. Atop a new Yukon Trail a few miles from the Alaskan border, men of the famous Canadian Mounted Police join in opening the new United States to Alaska Highway, one of the greatest road building feats of all time. Officials cut the ribbon barrier in simple tribute to the American Army engineers who blazed the vital pathway through the Arctic wilderness. Completed months ahead of schedule, the new 1,600-mile Alcon Highway sees the first truck convoy begin to roll, a new Northwest Passage linking the United States with Alaska. Troops, Australians and Americans under General MacArthur, push on past captured tanks in their drive to blast the Jap from New Guinea. Along the beaches, they find Jap landing boats, wrecked and abandoned, their sides riddled with gunfire. Here, a group of Australians with a captured Japanese battle flag. Through the muddy, green wall jungle, troops advance with guns ready, their helmets camouflaged against snipers that lurk on all sides. American howitzers, miraculously flown from the mainland, are pulled by sheer manpower across the wild Owen Stanley Mountains, pulled by men straining and sweating every foot of the way. Lookout posts high in trees watch for supply planes, Supplies that are dropped like mana from heaven. Food and ammunition for troops that are winning their war against nature and the Jap. Somewhere in the Pacific, an unnamed United States aircraft carrier prepares for action. Contact with the enemy is established and fighter planes take off to attack. Guns are made ready. A Jap plane is met with a hail of anti-aircraft fire. Suddenly, an explosion on the afterdeck. A Jap bomber has scored a hit. Gunners keep right on blazing away. Firefighters and relief crews spring into action. But wait, looking aloft, they sight another dive bomber screaming in for the kill. As the deck crew seeks cover, the Navy cameraman filming these pictures sticks to his post. A gaping bomb hole reveals the damage, but it hasn't silenced the gunners. They're still firing away, and now they've scored a hit. Blazing in the 
sea are two Jap bombers blasted to bits. Now the carrier is fighting two foes, fire at sea and enemy planes. Calmly the crew works to keep the flames from spreading, and they do a seaman-like job. Racing against time and the enemy, the carrier crew is magnificent. Port gun smashed with that first hit on the flight deck. The carrier flashes word to her escort, we're still full of fight. The flight deck repaired, all planes accounted for. Action in the Pacific with the United States carrier. One year after entering the war, United States gains in naval tonnage shatter all records. Here the Bellow Wood, laid down as a cruiser, goes down the ways. The third aircraft carrier launched within three months. Another shipyard, the carrier Bunker Hill is launched, one of 26 ships to slide down the ways in a single day. <laughs> Queen of them all, the giant new USS New Jersey, mightiest battleship ever built. Five stories high, she's the fastest afloat. Armament and guns, naval secrets. The New Jersey will soon be in action with the fleet. Sydney, Australia gives a hero's welcome to their own veterans home on leave from the war. Veterans of campaigns in Greece and Libya, Crete and Syria. They've come a long way for this tribute and they've earned it. <laughs> Governor General Lord Gowrie takes the salute as the brigade passes in review. Hard fighters, their stout allies in the cause of the United Nations. The crowd, swept by emotion, breaks from the sidewalk to march with the troops. Their leave is short, but today they're the men of the hour.